very good evening to all the dignitaries. And uh, today, we are having a webinar on the usage of Dadistron, specifically in threatened abortion. And uh, we have with us the noted speaker, Dr. Chadha Jain, ma'am. And I would request uh, Sagarji, please display the CV of ma'am uh, Sangeeta, who is the chairperson right now, available among three. So, Uma madam is not there, I think. So, yeah. So, we have Sangeeta ma'am here. And this is a CV, short CV of uh, Doc Saab. Doc Saab has been the founder secretary of Delhi Gynecological Forum. And uh, Doc Saab is, uh, was an ex-HOD in Ops and Gyne in PGMSR, Delhi, Vasai Darapur. Doc Saab has, is, the, is the member safe motherhood community member in Foxy 1130. Faculty for maternal and mortality workshops held at different parts of North India. And uh, Doc Saab is a computer trainer for Foxy Fast Track Initiative and conducted many workshops all over North India in basic management of PPH and POPG. Doc Saab is a co-chairperson, Safe Motherhood Commission of AOGD, Delhi, since 2013-15 and after 15-17 she was there. And executive member of AOGD since 2006. Member Delhi Gaini Endoscopic Society member Gaini Endocrine Society and uh, of India and member of Women's Wing, IMA. And Dr. Saab has several awards, has awarded WHO Fellowship in Gynecology, Oncology in 2011 from AIMS, received training on ART from AIMS, Delhi, eliminating preventive material, maternal mortality is the field of interest of Dr. Sangeeta. I would request Dr. Sangeeta to welcome Dr. Sharda, ma'am, to take us forward for this session. Sir, stop sharing. Stop sharing. I will I will just speak. Okay, ma'am. Uh, good Thank afternoon. I, I just uh, want to say one word for madam that uh, madam is uh, my mentor and madam is organizing everything whatever is possible uh, for Delhi gynecologists as well as other doctors, nursing staff and I think she's she's doing a tremendous job which which cannot be said in words. So I welcome you madam and I invite you to talk uh, on a such a important and decent topic of uh, threatened abortion and role of resistance. I think today I'm going to do a great job uh, of uh, speaking and anchoring today. Uh, yeah. We gynecologists have a dictum. Healthy mother and have a healthy baby. And this is the motto which has been spearheading the advances in the field of uh, obstetrics. My colleagues uh, uh, and the immediate uh, junior colleague of mine will appreciate, but when they were doing post-graduation, that is before 80 and 85, before the ultrasound came to India, which has became a third eye for every gynecologist. It was very common to see that the maternity wards, 50% were occupied by threatened abortion. And that time we did not have any much of investigations. The only treatment which we used to do was, was give them a rest and give them a proliton along with the folic acid. And because we did not have anything to monitor, anything, anything we just grew, just grew, but 50% got aborted. And now you find, when I'm talking in 2022, I'm going to just today address the role of diadrogestone in threatened abortion. I'm not going to talk on the etiology. I'm not going to talk about the rest of the treatment. My focus has going to be very small. As you all know that threatened abortion is a, uh, is a daily occurrence faced by the uh, gun, uh, obstetricians and uh, more so uh, the people who are ART experts, you find we find that the incidence of uh, threatened abortion is much more uh, in ART pregnancies. And one can say that the threatened abortion is somehow, is a kind of an emergency, unexpected and requires immediate uh, medical treatment. 
And my aim is to provide you uh, with the evidence-based evidence as far as the role of didogestron uh, in threatened abortion is concerned. As you can see here, COVID taught us many things. We saw the change. Many family members and the friends left, but life does not stop for anybody. Same thing happens for a medical treatment, which evaporate over a period of time. I will say that every five to 10 years, the medical treatment changes as far as various problems are concerned. But we must welcome this change. And we must welcome this particular change gracefully by regular updating ourselves. We all know, and this all this gathering also knows it very well, that lot of pregnancy loss take place. It is said that 30% pregnancy loss takes place prior to implantation. And nearly 30% following implantation, before the period is missed, before the pregnancy test is done. So nearly 55 to 60% pregnancies are lost before the pregnancy test is done. And thereafter, nearly 15 to 25% miscarriages takes place. 15% in a normal pregnancy and about nearly 25% or so in ART pregnancies. These are the clinical pregnancy loss after the pregnancy test is positive. And we know that around 70% conceptions are lost prior to live birth. But it is said that if the 12 weeks are passed, the major hurdles are over. Only 5% will problems will remain for the remainder of the pregnancy. So when we come to real definitions of threatened abortions, the threatened abortion, as I understand and as I teach, there has to be pain or bleeding or both. As far as the clinical presentations are concerned, we find in threatened abortion, there can be minimal bleeding or spotting, but has not progressed to a stage where the recovery is impossible. Patient complains of light bleeding, the os is still closed, the uterus, uterus corresponds to the period of hemorrhea, and when you put an ultrasound, the fetal cardiac activity is seen. There can be many options. Uh, what we find uh, in our transvaginal sonography findings, but the, fate, uh, the fact remains that we are talking about fetal abortion. Nearly 25% of pregnant women have some degree of vaginal bleeding during the first two trimester, and about 50% of these progress to pregnancy loss. And I see uh, in Dr. Jyoti Agarwal's uh, room, she has very clearly said, once a bleed spotting occurs to you, Take it before I do an ultrasound that 50% pregnancies are lost. This she has been doing it for almost 25 years. Because the people used to say, Dr. Jain, we have seen you the first day, and then you have seen loss. Ho gaya. So they must know that there is a God way telling you that something has gone wrong with your pregnancy, and that is to the tune of almost 50%. So certain abortion is a challenging problem to all obstetricians. Now, we all know that the pregnancy is mismatched organ transplant. And still why a woman does not discard the pregnancy? In spite of that, that this allogenic embryo has a 50% contribution from the father. And still it is not rejected. So, so the progesterone plays an important role in protecting the allogenic embryo from immunogenic rejection. So in short, the progesterone is not only essential for conception and implantation, but also it is needed throughout the pregnancy until term. Aneuploidy and the low progesterone levels is associated with increased risk of miscarriage as for the Cochrane review is concerned, and I'm not going to really deal in detail about this. So when this progesterone, you must remember it is a dominant hormone during pregnancy. 
Here I just wish to tell you there is nothing like natural progesterone. Every progesterone which gynecologists use left and right is synthetic progesterone. But it becomes a question of debate that they differ with respect to their potency, root of administration, bioability. So which one is better? So it brings us to what is the characteristic, what should be the characteristic of an ideal progesterone. It should have a higher bioavailability once taken and predictable, predictable plasma concentration. It should have a lower dosage and a dosing convenience should be there, should be patient friendly. It should favor tolerability by patient when again, a patient friendly uh, med medication should be there. And this will bring higher compliance by the patient. Now, didogesterone. Now it is, the debate has been going on for the last many years with regard to bioavailability, side effects, ease of use, and outcome. But this debate has ended in 2019. This is our third presentation in the last three years, as far as this debate is concerned. The verdict was out in 2019. When an original article was published in New England Journal of Medicine, which was a randomized trial of progesterone in women with bleeding in early pregnancy. It had a large data, robust evidence. Half the group was belonging to group one, where 400 milligram of micronized vaginal progesterone twice daily was used in good 2,000 patients. And the placebo was used in the second group. What was the most revealing and beautiful part was that there was no significant increase in live birth was noted with natural micronized progesterone use vaginally in the first trimester among women with bleeding in early pregnancy. I repeat again, once this micronized vaginal progesterone was used, there was no significant increase in the live birth rate when there was a bleeding in early pregnancy was noted. Soon they found that the clinical evidence in threatened abortion started favoring didrogestron since 2000. Or I will share a decade earlier, which my colleague just now, uh, Dr. Uh, Sangeeta, was just trying to tell that it was 1990 that we started using this particular salt. And early state uh, published study came from Malaysian experience. And again, this was a large study of 200 cases. And where they had used this didrogestron preparation in the dose of 40 milligrams statin threatened abortion, and this was followed by 10 milligram BD. And they found that the miscarriage occurred in 12.5% of a didrogestron group compared to 28.4% in the control group. Then another study came from Omar. Again, the same number, almost 150 cases were published. And they also used the same medication, 40 milligram didrogestron STAD and a 10 milligram BD, which was given for a week or till the bleeding stopped. And the conclusion was didrogestone has been shown to reduce the incidence of pregnancy loss in threatened abortion to the tune of 50%, to the tune of 50%. And then once you find that the data starts accumulating, the RCTs come. So the meta-analysis came by Lee in 2017 and roping 1900, 900 cases, and it showed that it was a didrogestone versus the control group. The incidence of miscarriage was significantly lower in the oral didrogestone group compared to the control group. Significantly lower. P was 0 0.001. While 
vaginal micronized progesterone versus control when they were used, the incidence of miscarriage was lower in vaginal progesterone as compared to control group, although the difference was not clinically significant or statistically significant. A lot of interest came in clinician, then the Cochrane Review came in 2018. Again, settling this, and they concluded that treatment with dihydrogestone compared with no treatment probably reduced miscarriage rate. Comparison to the treatment with vaginal micronized progesterone compared to placebo probably had little or no effect in reducing miscarriage rate, being a very clear signal to all gynecologists what hormone progesterone need to be used. Again, the data started duplicating, as I say, that there's no dearth of certain abortion. And if we can get a ready answer, we found another meta-analysis came in 2019, and this was from the Japanese group, which was published in Jap Jap Japan Society of Setting and Gynecology in 2019, and they reviewed 2017 data, 18 data, and added on 2019 data. And what did they find? They concluded again that the treatment compared to the daily reducing abortion rate compared to the vaginal progesterone and that was to the tune of almost 50 percent rl was 0.9 so the verdict is out very clear out it says that the oral management with dihydrogestone was associated with a lower risk of miscarriage compared with vaginal natural micro as i told you just now that there's no progesterone which is used is natural they all come from plant they are processed they can become micronized progesterone and when light technology is added then it changes their shape by light enhances their progesterone activity improves the bioavailability bioavailability specificity and affinity to progesterone receptors and thereby increasing the potency and decreasing the side effects. So the small change can make a lot of difference in their potential usage. We all know, we talk about it, that it has not only it is protective, it has immunomodulatory properties. What do we mean by immunomodulatory properties? Immunomodulatory properties means it decreases pro-inflammatory cytokines, and it increases anti-inflammatory cytokines in early pregnancy. That is called Th1, which is pro-inflammatory cytokines. And NK cells are, they bring pregnancy disaster. While when they anti-inflammatory cytokines in early pregnancy creates Th2 type of picture, which is very helpful for pregnancy continuation. It is said that the dihydrogestone has a higher progesterone receptor affinity. There's no affinity for androgens, mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids, and estrogenic receptors. As for the metabolite of dihydrogestone are concerned, no, before that, the dihydrogestone and the nitric oxide, it influences nitric oxide production, which is a possible effect on the survival of the embryo because it increases the blood flow, it increases the oxygen supply, maintains the quiet myometrium and thereby improving the survival of the embryo. Coming to the metabolite of dihydrogestrone, which is dihydrodihydrogestrone, it retains the immunomodulatory effect and it also suppresses the pro-inhibitory cytokine in the similar way as the main product. Now, this slide summarizes, we, which you have uh, seen and heard it time and again, that when we compare dihydrogestrone with micronized vaginal progesterone, 
you find that oral bioavailability is to the tune of 28% with diadrogestron, and which is only less than 5% with micronized vaginal progesterone, which is used. When it comes to dosage, the dosage of diadrogestron is 10 to 20 times lower than the micronized progesterone used vaginally, showing obvious clinical clear advantage. Here, here you can see that diadrogestron reaches the peak absorption. Within half an hour to two hours, the peak is same. And this is maintained for this concentration is maintained for five to six hours. Well, as for the uh, vaginal progestogens are concerned, they permit targeted drug delivery for a short period of time. The drug diffuses over a period of four to five hours. And in the first two hours, you find the maximum gain is seen. Vaginal progestogen has uh, some disadvantage, like it causes perineal irritation and a, a vaginal, increased vaginal discharge, which is some, sometimes uncomfortable uh, to our patients. When it comes to the safety of these two progestogens, oral diadrogestrone and vaginal micronized progesterone, is they are safety-wise both are safe. And there is no difference as far as the congenital malformations are concerned. Both are pretty safe as far as uh, this particular aspect of uh, drugs is concerned of its use in early pregnancy. So finally, this slide, slide summarizes that orally active progesterone, which is called diadrogestone, is quite attractive. Uh, it is potent. Uh, the dosage is 10 to uh, 20 times lower oral dosage. Bioavailability is to the tune of 28 percent. It's got a high life, half life of five to seven hours. It is non-androgenic, non-estrogenic, non-corticosteroid, non-anabolic, and it has got immunomodulatory role. What is the dose? I repeat again that the stat dose when you have thing is four tablets of 10 milligram each. It is followed by 20 milligram in two divided doses in otherwise pregnancy and 30 milligram in ART pregnancies until the symptoms disappear and usually one week. As far as the FOXY statement is concerned, this FOXY statement came in 2015 before the final verdict was made. According to the FOXY uh, statement, uh, this progesterone has a high affinity for progesterone receptors and it is, does not combine with androgen, mineral country card, and estrogenic receptors. Fox's statement also emphasized immunomodulatory effect, which enhances implantations, changes cytokinins from Th1 to Th2, and it inhibits natural chiral cell activity as well. This slide is very uh, dear to me. Whenever Embryo is implanted. Th1 side response is activated, and Th1 cytokinins are liberated in the in the system. That is TN alpha and interleukin two. These are harmful cytokinins, and they throw away the pregnancy. They also potentiate the effect of natural killer cells, lympho kind activated killer cells and the abortion of the fetus takes place. But when you add, add diadrogestron, it reduces progesterone induced blocking factors. It is increased. It blocks the cascade reaction, shifts from Th1 to Th2 type of intrauterine environment and embryo protective immunomodulation is thus brought about, giving protection to the embryo and the fetus. Diadrogen acts on the nitrous oxide. It increases nitric oxide. Nitric oxide acts as a potent vasodilator and plays major role in increasing uterine blood flow and endometrial blood flow during the luteal phase and early pregnancy. So to sum up, the dose is four tablets. And thereafter, this and there is no evidence of harm is seen as far as this drug is concerned. So I can just summarize that threatened, in threatened miscarriage, your counseling, tender love and care 
plus dihydrogestone as a magical effect. Here comes the counseling. Do tell your patient you attract your problems yourself. So be positive. If you're positive, you attract positive things. And if you're negative, you're too much anxious, then probably the outcome is going to be bad. So conclude, the evidence supports superiority of oral dihydrogestone over micronized natural progesterones. Oral dihydrogestone may replace micronized vaginal progesterone as standard of care owing to the ease of oral administration. Patient-friendly compliance is there. It also is seen that as compared to the natural micronized progesterone, dihydrogestone has a higher oral bioavailability. It is non-androgenic, non-estrogenic, non-corticosteroid, and non-anabolic. It offers patient-friendly oral administration, which improves patient compliance and provides better safety and a patient tolerability. It has got immunomodulatory property, and the dihydrogestone reduces the incidence of pregnancy loss and threatened abortion and can effectively prevent miscarriage in pregnant women experiencing threatened abortion. But here I wish to just tell you that it is only to the tune of 50%. It can decrease the loss. It will not care. And, and, and care uh, an abortion which, which uh, abort, uh, uh, embryo which is not normal. So thank you very much. We will have one minute uh, Sir, video by the, the company. And followed by your video also. Now. One more video okay. We can have that particular video. Yes. Sagar, kindly go ahead with the video. Yes. Let me ask you a question. What do you practice? Because whatever you practice, you'll become very good at it. Right? So, what do you practice? Do you practice joy in your life? Do you practice peace in your life? Do you practice happiness in your life? Or do you practice complaining? Because if you practice complaining, you'll become very good at it. So good at it that you'll find fault with everything. Like you are the expert on things you know nothing about. Or do you practice anger? Because if you practice anger, you'll become very good at it. So good at it that the most trivial things will make you angry. Or do you practice worrying? Because if you practice worrying, you'll become very good at it. So good at it that everything will worry you. So, if it is a matter of practice, let us practice happiness, kindness, love, mercy, grace, peace, enthusiasm, etc. And if we practice any of those things, we will get really good at them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Familiar to as far as Delhi Gynecologist Forum is concerned, this girl is her daughter. She has a lot of messages. I was a little irritated. I, I did not realize who's anchoring this particular session. So I found, you know, that Vinakshi was there in the imaging center getting her ultrasound done. And Dr. Jyoti Bhaskar was missing. But I thought I'm not going to lose my terms. This particular video has been made and I thought, you know, let me just play this particular video to keep me calm. So this probably video probably tells many things to many, many people that you don't have to 
react. You must see the positive side of it, that there are so many people who are there. Otherwise, Dr. Jain does not find incompetent to anchor any session where she's speaking. So this thing, it brings to me, welcome all my experts. I think before we uh, have uh, uh, experts comment, focusing on this particular thing. What had been your old practice? What is your now, now practice? Let's hear one minute video from the MCOR people. Uh, can we have your video, sir? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, ma'am. Mr. Sagar, please go ahead with the video. Diderofem, faith delivered. Diderofem is bioequivalent to Innovator at 25% lower cost. It is made using complex photon bombardment and purification process. Diderofem's structure is exactly like the reference Diderogesteron structure. This brand is brought to you by Dr. Mukund Gurjar, rated as one of the top 75 scientists in India by CSIR. Diderofem is brought to you by NCure, India's number one company in women's health, most trusted by gynecologists. It is for patients with recurrent pregnancy loss, history of miscarriage and defective luteal phase. It has better potency, bioavailability and tolerability than progesterone. Diderofem, MCure's Diderogesterone, proud to be made in India. So I think we'll uh, we'll start by the comment by the senior most person, Dr. Sangeeta Gupta, which we all know she's uh, uh, has been there my right hand since the very beginning. Uh, so to have Dr. Sangeeta Gupta, I, got, I can't see Dr. Umar I. So we will have opinion from Dr. Sangeeta Gupta. What is your comment as for the treatment is concerned? Uh, Madam, uh, thanks a lot. And I feel quite nostalgic remembering the days of 1985 and 86 when we used to take bar rounds in uh, Harding Hospital. And Madam has correctly said that 50% of our obstetric ward patients were threatened abortion. Some will say we don't want to go home. Some will say, Madam, still the uh, bleeding is continuing. And we used to have a practice that collect your all pads. We will examine them in the morning whether there is really a bleeding or not and then we will consider your discharge so this was a practice there and we had nothing in our hand except the total or complete bed rest to the patient suggest this and uh, carry on the pregnancy uh, to a later date of gestation if possible but things are not the same now we all know that pregnancy is a uh, hormone mediated physiological state and that's why progesterone is called as pregnancy hormone. And with um, latest many meta-analyses and clinical trials, and with 2021, uh, 25th November 1921, 2021 guidelines, NICE guidelines, it has now been stated that all high-risk pregnant women need to be supplemented by progesterone during early pregnancy, as well as low-risk women if they have history of one miscarriage. So there is no doubt about the role of progesterone in early pregnancy in threatened abortion. Now, once we have decided that progesterone has to be given again, as Madam said, the question arises: which progesterone? And it depends upon its bioavailability, its doses, its side effects, and uh, its uh, tolerance to the patient. And she has correctly said the didrogestron now uh, oral dose, which is uh, highly effective, well tolerated. And latest all trials have said that there is no increased masculinization in a female fetus or chance of hypospadiasis in it. Male fetus. So, doctor, you are working in a ESI hospital. Uh, yes. How is the limitation as far as this salt is concerned in your practice? In the there government? is no limitation as far as ESI is concerned, and we are giving in good number to all the patients who come with us with a spotting. Of course, we are giving thirty milligram stat and then ten milligram BD till seven days or ten days till the bleeding stops, and after that we evaluate for uh, from ultrasound the need of further continuation of pregnancy uh, of the drug, and in high risk cases we continue continue the drug 10 milligram BD for 14 to 16 weeks. This is our usual 
uh, thing which we are doing. We have now we have a stalwarts from the private sector. I'm going to have an opinion of Dr. Minakshi Ahuja from the south and Dr. Lena Shridhar from the uh, from Dwarka side and Dr. Mamta Mittal uh, from north and Dr. Uh, Deepthi Nab from the uh, from east. So let's start with the uh, you, Dr. Minakshi Ahuja. Unmute yourself, doctor. Unmute. And at the outset, I must say that I was transported back to college days. And, you know, diagrogestrone or progesterone in pregnancy, we all talk about it, discuss it in so many forums. But today, listening to your presentation was actually, it's not that I'm saying it just for the sake. It was like teachers of teachers. My father used to say that if the teacher can simplify a subject, that means that that person is a true teacher. That it seems so easy that you feel that you understand everything. And really, I really enjoyed your talk. It was so simply exemplified. Everything was there without useless data and all. What was important was highlighted. And it's very true. I am a big you know, believer of didrogestron in threatened pregnancies, in threatened abortions, in high-risk pregnancies. In my experience, I've been also giving the 40 mg. In fact, yesterday only I had a patient who said, that I am having a little uh, spotting. It was a precious pregnancy. And she was already on didrogestron. So she asked me that, Doc, should I come to the hospital? I said, look, if you're, if you're having any placental separation and you're going to move from home, it is only going to worsen. And if we've lost something by coming to the hospital, I can't put life into something which is not there. But if it is salvageable, you're taking rest and taking progesterone just now will help you. Come to the hospital after 48 hours or 24 hours, and then we'll see what's happening. So she took her didrogestron 40 mg immediately, took rest, because that reassurance and counseling, like you very rightly pointed out, is extremely important. We learn, we have to learn to empathize with the patient, put in a positive sense in her that by doing this, you're helping your pregnancy the most. And today she came because she stopped bleeding after that. And she got the ultrasound done and the pregnancy was absolutely fine. So definitely, I am a firm believer and I agree with you absolutely that putting vaginal uh, progesterone in any woman who is pregnant and bleeding is not a, a viable option because it will come out. We don't know how much of it will be absorbed. And secondly, patients are also not comfortable putting anything vaginally when they are having any bleeding in their pregnancy. So that way also it works better. And didrogestron definitely has the immunomodulatory effect. So that I, I'm again a firm believer in. And I give it to all my high-risk pregnancies as well as patients of threatened abortions. Once I start, I usually continue till 20 weeks. Because I think that's what Dr. Ashok Kumar's... Ma'am, you have to unmute karna padega. I will ask Dr. Jyoti Zagarwal comment. She is a very fond of this particular salt. In fact, uh, in 2000, the first report which came from uh, Malaysia, it was Dr. Jyoti Agarwal brought it to our notice that it is a very simple thing, except it was very costly. Dr. Jyoti Agarwal, you have to say something? Yes, a very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, definitely, we were using it in uh, 1990s. And then uh, after the Malaysian report, that is a peak COVID area, I still remember that slide that it was a Naya Savera for us. And from micronized vaginal progesterone, we shifted to oral hydrogestrone. And since then, we are using it left and right for all our infertility patients. Incidence of threatened abortion is definitely slightly more in IVF and um, ART pregnancies. And we are using it. And the dose is very important. Uh, instead of 30 milligrams, we should um, go ahead without any fear for 40 milligrams. That is the right dose of the progesterone, otherwise it will not work. And then we follow it up um, 20 milligrams or 30 milligrams, depending on the need. Uh, I'm a very strong supporter of diagrogestron and I'm very happy with it so far. Dr. Lina. Yes, ma'am. First of all, congratulations, ma'am. Unmute yourself, Lina. Uh, I'm unmuted. I think. Lina, your volume is very low. Just come closer to the screen or the camera or the speaker. Okay. Yeah. Better. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, better. Yeah. 
So, ma'am, wonderful talk. It was so clear, so concise, and I think I think my previous uh, speakers have actually really summarized uh, most of the things. What I would just like to add is, you know, uh, it definitely our admission rates for threatened abortion have decreased drastically. And what I found it, uh, although we, I've, I've been using this salt for quite some time, just like, you know, uh, each one of us uh, here on the on the panel. But uh, what I would say is that during this, you know, uh, video consultation that we were doing during COVID times, it was really a big, uh, you know, blessing for the patients because you had a lot of, you know, panicky situations as bleeding. Should I come to the hospital? Should I wait for some time? And, uh, you know, the kind of counseling that you uh, you did, you, you, you uh, let them know that, look, this kind of a thing can happen. You need rest. You need to take your medication. You can just tell them very uh, easily, take uh, your four tablets immediately and then take one morning, evening and yes, wait for some more time. The bleeding stops. Uh, let us give another gap, uh, especially those patients who are very, very early in the pregnancy and, uh, you know, who felt that there was going to be something extra achieved by coming to the hospital when it was, you know, especially during the second wave, we found that uh, it was really very, uh, uh, you know, it was re we really wanted to keep them away from the hospitals. And um, uh, sure enough, I mean, uh, what I found is that the bleeding would stop. The patient would have, the, you know, the more confidence in her doctor, in the system, and you know, would come uh, at a, at the appropriate time for her ultra follow up uh, visit and her ultrasound. So this was one big uh, advantage. And the other thing is the very ease of you know oral administration. And uh, by and large, you know. I feel uh, uh, Indian women do not like the concept of a vaginal progesterone. I've had a lot of patients used to have when we were using um, um, uh, natural micronized progesterone coming in with, you know, complaining of itching, blistering, feeling of, you know, uh, discharge, which was very worrisome, especially when, you know, you're having bleeding and you're wondering whether the discharge is uh, the discharge because of the tablet or whether it's going to it's it's going to herald another bleeding. Uh, spell. So that was the other, I think, very important uh, point which I found that that has led to patient accept acceptability, uh, ease, and most most important uh, effectiveness. So uh, this is a wonderful salt, and uh, we are all using it. We uh, uh, and you know admission rates are coming down. You can understand in a corporate hospital. Uh, you know the expense of a conservative management where you are really not going to be doing anything. Uh, more than uh, uh, what can be done at home so uh, that again is something which we have to consider so we could we can't possibly think of keeping our patients for you know days together so this is i think a wonderful salt and uh, we are all using it dr dipti what is your choice good afternoon ma'am <clears throat> ma'am i remember long back there are now very uh, numerous uh, seminars and webinars but 20 years back, there used to be once in three months or so. Then you were also one of the speakers and uh, you had spoken about tender loving care as one school of thought for treating patients with uh, threatened abortions or habitual abortions and the other school of thought was medical management. Unfortunately, medical management then had nothing but 80% bed rest and 20% was use of alanistrinol and multivitamins and folic acid onwards. There was nothing. But now how things have changed, we are doing evidence-based practice and we all understand that the patient who comes to you with a history of abortion or she's bleeding and she's pregnant, she comes with a lot of psychological distress, severe psychological distress. We need to be very, very careful. And I remember then some years back again, ma'am spoke about treatment of habitual abortion. We had a very big uh, panel discussion on that. And then ma'am had mentioned that now we combine the two. We have tender loving care. You, we, we need to reassure the patient. We do frequent scans to, you know, uh, make her hear the heartbeat. But then a wonderful thing happened. And then we had this oral progesterone. Side by side, we also had the um, micronized progesterone. So somewhere I think, ma'am, it was more a question of marketing that how they try. Ma'am, your choice. Which day? When did you speak about the hydrogen Ma'am, long back, long back, ma'am. Initially, it was very expensive. It was not available, and patient used to actually come back and tell me, "Aapne itni mehngi dawai likhi." So the only thought, I, what I would say was, "Baby ko bachana hai, toh ekhao." That was now, but thankfully now things have changed. 
it is now less expensive it is easily available and yes i use this uh, uh, way of treatment when a patient comes with a bleeding episode so four tablets start which i think they there was an acronym for habitual aborters for certain abortions with the uh, endocrinal disorders so with pain so there are some specific group where you need to give 40 uh, four tablets start otherwise generally either 10 mg pd or 10 mg tds yes till the episode is passed i'm going to just cut short you we have uh, many stalwarts here clinical stalwarts and, and very practical people i am going to ask mamta mittal i am going to ask rupa maroda i am going to ask dr harsha kulla dr sir is dihydrogestron ke alawa aur kya cheeze aap use karte ho dr mamta mittal and when was the last patient you admitted for thread and abortion in the hospital dr sir you have to unmute yourself dr mamta hello yeah now am i audible yes 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 uh ma'am now to we don't need to admit patients for threatened abortions uh we can treat them at home and while i was listening through this talk you know it is i feel that it is important to know when to start progesterone how much to start progesterone but it is also very very important to know when to stop giving that progesterone you know so many times i see patients at 26 weeks pregnancy 28 weeks pregnancy ki humne first trimester mein start kiya tha wo tab se liye ja rahe hain you know because i don't know because either their uh, consultant has doctor, to just to stop it on your practice what is your practice ma'am i stop it around 12 weeks once the actually we are supposed to do it around between 8 to 10 weeks but Uh, once the patient gets the chromosomal scan done everything is all right i stop it at 12 weeks good dr harsha kullar mujhe bataiye aapko uh, i remember you remember our harding days you know together but yes, now yes. what is your practice as for the bed rest is concerned do you give any other thing beside your folic acid and hydrogestrone please uh, madam dr dr kullar uh, ma'am i must say first of all congratulations it was a very interesting and very simplified lecture you have uh, spoken on this hydrogestron and very simplified and we could understand everything now in my practice actually i give progesterone that is hydrogestron only previously we were giving sustain and all my natural my micronized natural progesterone but now we have stopped giving that and secondly that patients are not admitted for threatened abortions as the previous speaker has also said there is no need to admit the patient and if it is slight spotting only we give them dihydrogestron and it has to be continued till 16 weeks of pregnancy why till 16 weeks because once the placenta takes over the function i think it has to be continued till that the other than uh, this thing dihydrogestron previous practice was to give this uh, of course natural micronized progesterone and proliton depot also we used to give that injection but that is very painful and it is not accepted by most of the patients and with dihydrogestron patient they, they accept it very nicely because with vaginal tablets pastries and all they got all those symptoms of discharge and uh, this thing to keeping uh, to keep it inside and keep lying down for about half an hour to one hour so that it doesn't come out so this is all but these days the gels are also available but uh, we are using this i i'm using this dihydrogestron only these days good good and uh, i'm going to ask dr rupa maroda dr rupa maroda one of the very uh, popular gynecologist in our uh, area dr rupa what is your practice ma'am you must give a video also i, uh-huh. I am a big advocate of using this dihydrogestron and uh, i give till 28 weeks also depending on the preciousness of pregnancy if ivf pregnancy is there and patient is having uh, pain and all these things then i continue till 28 weeks also and i am very big advocate of that and it is very acceptable salt and it is because it is oral and my patients are very hesitant about taking this vaginally so i prefer dihydrogestone only doctor rest uh, kitna dete ho rest रेस्ट का तो मैडम कोई आजकल कहते हैं कि यूज नहीं है ज्यादा तो जस्ट आप क्या करते हो लिखते हो आप कागज में रेस्ट नहीं मैम हम कहते हैं कि थोड़ा सा ज्यादा जैसे 8 आवर्स रेस्ट शुड बी देयर एज प्रिस्क्राइब्ड इन जनरल प्रेगनेंसी टेक 2 आवर्स मोर रेस्ट आई जस्ट डोंट राइट बेड रेस्ट बिकॉज़ नाउ डेज एविडेंस बेस्ड प्रैक्टिस इज नॉट एडवाइजेबल इफ हार्ट बीट इज देयर आई ऑलवेज टेल 
इस बेबी को सरवाइव करना है तो करेगा है ना चाहे अपन कितना भी उसको करें तो इसलिए अगर अपन सपोर्ट करेंगे तो इट्स ओके अदरवाइज अगर हार्ट बीट आएगी तो आएगी अदरवाइज वी कैन नॉट पुट द हार्ट बीट इन द पेशेंट वो तो कुदरती तौर पे आएगी इसीलिए अगर बेबी को बचना है सरवाइव होना है तो विथ ऑल दी सपोर्ट बेबी विल सरवाइव सो डोंट डॉक्टर नीजा वाशने डॉक्टर नीजा वाशने आप क्या कहेंगी you have been working till now in a in a government sector and now you uh, switched on to a uh, private sector uh, doctor you have to unmute yourself main aap se sari baat sunungi jo ki aapke uh, public sector ke hospitalon mein aap use karte the ma'am when we started the uh, like i started my job naturally at that particular moment we were using only uh, proluton dipo <clears throat> and sometimes uh, if excessive bleeding was there we used to admit the patients and <clears throat> only uh, later on when uh, and then we switched over to pro- progesterones like sustain and all that also we used a lot but for last 15 20 years even in my government uh, practice i was using hydrogestron okay. and i still remember many patients like uh, we used to give them 40 mg start they used to wonder char tablet six up khani and rox up they can you just see the result and by, once the baby survived and i get the cesarean for the patient they were so happy that you that four tablets made our day and uh, the bleeding stopped immediately i consider it as a wonder drug i give it in the luteal phase also supposing uh, if i am uh, giving a over induction to the patient ovulation induction in infertile patient i give it as a luteal support also i am using it in uh, high risk pregnancy like uh, if a patient already had some uh, no no so we will focus on only on fetal abortion I will ask Dr. Bhas, Dr. Jyoti Bhaskar. You are very rational. How much, you know, you start this particular drug? How long you should go on? You have heard people using it till twelve weeks, then sixteen weeks, then twenty weeks, and twenty-eight weeks. What is what is your practice? Maybe if it has been given for a threatened miscarriage with a patient who does not have a very high risk pregnancy in the form of a history of a bad obstetric. Prime is grave, da. Ma'am, fourteen weeks after that, I stopped the drug. and the only thing i would like to ask the panel man one question is this that how do we stop the drug do we stop it completely or should we reduce it to 10 mg one day and then stop it over two weeks this is a dilemma for me i actually do not know how to stop the drug doc so i find that the cost is prohibitive so what i do i do tell them look this is threatened abortion i am going to stop this particular medication recommended is 7 days after the bleeding has stopped i use it for a week and people like me my patient pressurized me i don't know whether your patient pressurized you or not my day patients definitely pressurized me doc sir isko kab tak likhenge main kahungi 12 hafte tak likhenge 12 hafte mein beta main tere ko proliton pe change kar dungi when this proliton is still used by nearly one third of the doctors still across but most of us have switched it on that 12 hafte ke baad proliton use karna shuru kiya so, so in my practice I definitely write down there that I am going to stop this particular drug after two weeks, and we can give alternative. Maybe they alone may not be anything, and we can. We, I start to write on and at at twelve weeks. So this is uh, what it is. Is Doctor Paul here, Poonam Paul? No, ma'am, she is not there on this. Okay, Doctor Surjit is here. No, no. I'm asking everyone to join on the delegate because we were on the delegate once. I, I would like to talk on a point that if once bleeding stops, you have stopped giving this hydrogestrone. Now again, patient has bleeding. Then how to deal with it? Doctor, sir, his treatment is here. Let me be very frank. Yeah. These are the very patient who is going to have a placenta previa later on. These will will stop. We will keep giving. But if you see that the placenta is high up. there has been a no retroplacent plot normally it once it is effective it is effective let me be very frank recurrent will only come uh, come whenever whenever there is an evidence of uh, uh, placenta previa i would like to have opinion anybody can speak when anybody they can told, in literature they have said i mean dihydrogestron people have said that once if the bleeding re occurs you can start again um, the same dose and with the increasing well, say uh, same drug with the increasing dose like you if you had uh, stopped last at 10 mg bd then you can start at 10 mg tds or like that so this has been the recommendation that if again no, patient char to shuru mein start karenge aur baad mein do denge ya teen denge art pregnancy mein dr khuller aapki kya practice hai hmm ma'am if the patient again has the bleeding we have to find out the cause that what is the cause as ma'am has already said that there can be the placenta previa or there can be successive flow also of the placenta 
so we have to rule out the cause if whether it is due to that so once it, this thing it has been ruled out i think we can uh, i think we can simply put the patient on proliton depot not on this thing i don't recommend to give this type to just on if the patient has again bleeding dr minakshi who jab we like to hear from you mm. Ma'am, I uh, like I said, I'm a very firm believer of digestion, and I like I would go to four and then switch to ten to ten milligram BD or TDS. If she has a recurrent episode of bleeding, we would do the same. Mm. I mean, I would give her four tablets together again. Yes. What is ma'am everyone's opinion about HCG? Because a lot of patients are given HCG. I am not using HCG in pregnancy. There's no role of HCG. Not using at all. There's no role of HCG during pregnancy. Absolutely. And Dr. Jyoti, coming to no your role. question on how to stop it, if uh, I've been continue, I'll tell the patient because the patient, like ma'am said, will always ask till when are you going to continue it. So if it was one episode of threatened abortion in a primary, like ma'am said, I'll tell her just to be on the safer side. We will give it till twelve weeks, and they all understand that even the expense aside, she has been, you know, because at least the placenta takes over the function at that time. Yes. And if there was a high risk pregnancy, then twenty weeks. So they understand the cost of a pregnancy is much more than the cost of digestion. So that yes. once you can counsel the patient on that, she will. She's there with you. She's paying thousand or fifteen hundred as a consultation. She is going to pay for the. We, we will have a last minute. Any ad from Dr. Deepthi Ram? Anything else you want to say? No, ma'am. I am a firm believer. I am a big fan, rather, of didrogestron, okay. and I continue okay. till uh, uh, her second trimester very safely. So I am going to bring uh, this particular discussion to stop. Thank you very much for all the experts giving giving inputs and and everybody who is listening us probably everything.